Hi everyone, welcome back to more political chatter. So, I found this poll, and from the Hill, I mean, mo there have been multiple polls similar to this. This is from uh, April of 2022. 58% of Americans open to back an independent candidate if faced with Biden or Trump. So, ma many Americans are feeling a Biden versus Trump matchup. If you remember from 2020, many people... Uh, many independents, and not a Democrats really, voted for Biden to vote against Trump. However, many of these independents and Democrats have been turning against Biden, and uh, due to his unpopularity, you know, everything that matter. And Americans still hate Trump. I mean, if you go, I didn't pull up their uh, approval ratings, but if you go to Biden and Trump's approval ratings, they're both at the low 50s. Trump has a narrow lead over Biden. And that is a serious concern for many Americans because so many of Americans do not want a Biden versus Trump matchup. And this poll shows it right here. 58% of Americans open to backing independent candidate. Independent candidate. So this election prediction is between Joe Biden, Donald Trump, and Andrew Yang. So if you don't know Andrew Yang, he is a businessman from New York. He ran for president in 2020. Uh, and he really was able to grow his campaign. His campaign started with just his Gmail, uh, you know, list. You know, his mail, his mailing list was literally just his Gmail list, the people who he knew. And his campaign grew like crazy, um, enough to the point where he was like, uh, he made onto so many of the Democratic debates. And he uh, won 5% in Iowa before they had to, you know, um, on the first round of voting. So his campaign grew tremendously, and his key policy was a universal basic income, and this would give $1,000 to every American adult a month. Um, and he, you know, he had many issues, but he said he would pay for this by um, imposing a value-added tax, which would place a good on, like, every product sold, like, every Amazon product sold, or every Google search, whatever it is. Uh, you know, it is. So, Andrew Yang was very popular. He has become less popular recently due to um, a number of issues. He... Number one, he ran for New, uh, New York City mayor, w where he failed, so that kind of lowered his popularity. He made a weird tweet about um, Israel, and his Israel policy is kind of cringy now. And, um, but he is still very popular, and he has a large following. The Yang Gang, as I say, the Yang Gang is huge. I mean, it, I mean, no one would have thought that he'd be able to build this coalition. And in 2021, he released a uh, book called Forward by Andrew Yang, where he created a new political party, the Forward Party, and he made the case for this new party. And, you know, he brought this up. 58% of Americans. He wants Americans to have a new choice for president. And this, and the Forward Party, he sees, is Americans' choice. So, he has made the case for himself for a Forward Party run. This poll has made the case for a Forward Party run. So let's see how it affects it. So number one, I will say that Andrew Yang brought so many Trump voters into the Democratic primary. Just, and his Trump voters voted in the Democratic primary for Andrew Yang, no one else. It, you know, him and with the slight exception of Tulsi Gabbard was, were the only two people who Trump voters would be willing to vote for in the Democratic primary. So he will take a lot of votes away from Trump, but I mean, really, he ran in the 2020 Democratic primary. He used to be a Democrat before 2021. And, I mean, really, he will steal more Biden votes away from um, Biden, of course, than Trump, than Trump votes. So, that will, and especially due to Biden's unpopularity. So, let's see. Let's get into this election prediction. He will do very well in the state of California because he's very popular in um, Silicon Valley. But still, it will go save Biden at the end of the day. Uh, we'll get to why. Washington House is he going to save Biden. Um... Uh, New York, uh, no, we'll see about New York, uh, Vermont will be safe, Biden, Massachusetts will be safe, Biden, Maryland will be safe, Biden, D.C. will be safe, Biden, going to, uh, safe Trump states, uh, he, Andrew Yang could, uh, eh, never mind, Trump will win Utah, solidly, Wyoming, Idaho, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska at large, Nebraska's, uh, uh, nope. Nebraska's third district. Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, 
Mississippi, Alabama, and West Virginia all solidly. So not many solid states. And Andrew Yang will have no solid states, unfortunately. But there are not a lot of solid states for either party. As you can see, Biden has 93 solid electoral votes. Donald Trump has 91 electoral votes, uh, solid electoral votes. So really not many. That's only about like a third of all the votes, as you can see on this pie chart. And I'm going to put, I mean, you know, the likely Biden states like Oregon and, um, and Illinois and New York. These are three progressive states where Andrew Yang will do well. He did well in uh, New in New York. Well, I guess not really. He didn't do well in the 2020 Democratic primary because he didn't make it to these states. But at the end of the day, Andrew Yang will steal a lot of these city voters in Oregon, progressive cities like Portland. They will a lot of voters will enjoy Andrew Yang there, especially um, those of the poorer class, because he wants to abolish poverty. That's the big thing about his campaign is is repealing poverty. Going to Illinois and Chicago, he's going to get a lot of the low-income votes. In New York City, where he ran for mayor, of course, he's going to have a huge impact here because this is where he's from. This is his home state. He's from Schenectady, New York, right above New York City. And he will steal a lot of votes from Biden in the state of New York. Going down to Delaware, um, I mean, just because of Biden's unpopularity, I think that this would go likely to him, but it is his home state, so of course, it, you know, whatever. Going to Maine second, a uh, Maine, a progressive state, so Maine's first, a very progressive district, is going to go to Joe Biden by a likely margin. Going to, you know, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, at the end of the day, all three are going to go likely Biden. Yang will have some impact, in, which will decrease Biden's votes tremendously here, but they're not going to go lean or tilt, or, of course, to Yang or Trump. They are still going to go to Biden, but so far not a good performance by Joe Biden in this uh, in this uh, little map thing. Going to likely states for Donald Trump. Um, oh, I'm actually going to add one more safe state for Donald Trump, and that's the state of South Carolina. I think that Andrew Yang won't take a bunch of Trumpian Republicans in the South. It's very different in the Midwest. He will take a lot of Trump votes from uh, in Iowa, in Kansas, in Montana, in Nebraska second. But in the South, not too much. Not so much. This is so Trump territory that he does not much of a shot. He's more so going to steal uh, Joe Biden's votes here, which will make the state of South Carolina safe. But going to likely Trump states, Montana, as I just said, Yang will have an impact here. This is a rural state. Kansas, Yang will have an impact here. He will steal just as many Trump votes as Biden votes. Nebraska's, whoops, not Nebraska, second. Nebraska's first, he will have an impact. That will go likely for Donald Trump. Going to uh, the state of, um, you know, going to the state of Texas, um, I would, yeah, I would give it likely to Donald Trump. I think that Yang would take a lot of votes away from Biden here, not many from Trump. But it is shifting more so to the left, so I don't see it exactly going to uh, to Joe Biden at the end of, or going to, going to lean Trump at the end of the day. Going to Florida, this will be a likely state for Trump. Georgia will be a, a lean state for Trump. You know, the South is really where Andrew Yang won't have much of an impact, okay? These states will not be... Um, you know, likely Texas, likely Florida, lean Georgia, likely North Carolina. These states will not be, um, as, you know, characterized, as I'm saying, because of Andrew Yang. He's not going to have much of an impact here. He's somewhat popular among African Americans, but it's not going to change the outcome of these states. They are still going to go to Donald Trump at the end of the day. And in Virginia, a very much a Democratic establishment state, Andrew Yang might take a few votes away from Biden and Trump, but it won't have much of an impact. That will be lean for Biden. Going down to Alaska, I think that this would go lean Trump because of the fact that they do have a universal basic income. They're the only state to have a UBI in place, and a lot of them will see that a UBI works, and they will be more f open and friendly to the idea of voting for Andrew Yang. This will be a very close race. I think that Andrew Yang will come in second place, but Trump will come in third, and Biden would. I'm sorry. Trump will come in first, sorry, Trump comes in first, Yang comes in second, Biden comes in third. I think that this will be a pretty close day. I think that it will go to Trump by a lean margin. Going to New Mexico and Colorado. These are two states where Andrew Yang could do exceptionally well. 
New Mexico, not so much. Of course, it is in the Sun Belt. He's not going to have a, too much of an appeal down here. This will go lean Biden just because of Biden's unpopularity and Trump being more powerful. But Colorado will be close, and I think that it would go to tilt Biden. I think that Yang will steal a lot of votes away from Biden here. I still think that Trump will come in second place, but Yang will steal a lot of progressive votes away from Biden in the state of Colorado, and it, it will hurt him tremendously here. But I do think that Biden will be able to hang on. Going to Nebraska second with the split Democratic vote, I see it going to Trump by a lean margin. Indiana, I see likely Trump. So Andrew Yang's uh, base, really, I should say, is the Rust Belt. I mean, this is where America is struggling, in the Rust Belt. This is why Trump won here in 2016, because they cared about jobs. Their economy is failing. Cities are crumbling to the ground here. And Andrew Yang's universal basic income, he proposed this uh, idea in his campaign, and this is where it was popular, because these are the people, he said, that needed it in the Rust Belt that are needing a UBI to save these cities. A, U a UBI, he said, would create jobs. It would boost the economy. And if he campaigns here enough and gets the message out, I think that he would do very well in these states. But again, Trump and Biden being unpopular, maybe not so much. Going to Minnesota with that split Democratic vote, Andrew Yang, of course, will take some votes away from Trump at at, but at the end of the day, it will go to Donald Trump by a lean margin for the first time since, like, uh, 1972, I think. Going to Iowa, I think that Yang, uh, I think, mm, yeah, he will come in third here. But it will be safe Trump at the end of the day because he will take a lot of votes away from Biden. Ohio will be, uh, probably safe Trump as well. I mean, with Biden being so unpopular, there's not really any stopping Trump. But, I mean, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Andrew Yang will do very well in all three states, but especially Michigan. I could see him almost getting as many votes as Biden in here. Maybe that's a stretch. Maybe it's not. But uh, Trump will win Wisconsin by likely margin. Uh, Michigan might be a bit close because of Yang, but it will go to Donald Trump by a likely margin. And Pennsylvania will also go to him by a likely margin. All three states will be likely for Donald Trump. So Yang doesn't win the states, but he definitely does shift the states in favor of Donald Trump, and Donald Trump has already won this election. Going to Nevada, progressive state where I see Yang um, having some impact, and that ultimately will hurt Biden much more than Trump in a state like Nevada, where it's not in the Midwest or anything. So I think that, that it would go likely for Trump. Going to Arizona, I think that Yang will have some impact here. And it will go to Donald Trump by a likely margin. So going to the state of New Hampshire. New Hampshire, New Hampshire. I think it would go to Trump by a likely margin because Yang really does have a strong rural appeal. Definitely in a, in a more a white-dominated state like the state of New Hampshire will connect with that white rural kind of population, um, especially white men. And that will definitely give him a boost in the state of New Hampshire. But ultimately, it won't uh, give him the state, and it won't, and it's only going to take away a lot more votes from Biden, and the state will go to Trump by a, um, I'll say a lean margin, actually. Let's go to, uh, over to Maine, where I do think that Andrew Yang would be able to carry Maine's second district by a lean margin. This is the first Yang district, or, or state, you know, district slash, slash state. So I do think that it would go to Yang by a lean margin because they have had a history of reform candidates. They had they didn't go to Ross Perot, but I definitely think that it, it would have if he didn't have that weird drop out during the middle of the race. And uh, Perot actually came in second. He did great in Maine second district. He just came up came up short. They were you know they've always had this history of of independent or third party candidates doing better here than most other states. They are a white, rural district. They have a lot of young men, believe it or not. That's a little-known fact. A lot of young men live in Maine 2nd District. And a lot of these voters will be voting for Andrew Yang. He fits the description. He fits the description of the tribe. So it would go to Andrew Yang, and therefore Maine at Large. Maine at Large is pretty uh, complicated to predict, but I would say it goes tilt Biden. I think that this would be a very close two electoral votes. So that does put Yang on the board. 
Hawaii, I will give to Joe Biden. I mean, obvi- by lean margin. Obviously, Yang, being an Asian American, will connect with this strong Asian American vote vote base. He really was able to capture that Asian American vote in states like California and New York. Um, so Hawaii, I do think that he would do the same. But they are just such a democratic state that it would be really hard to do it. And I think that Biden will hang on with a lean margin win there. So, while well, would you well? Sorry, would you look at this map? What an interesting map. Donald Trump dominates this election with 326 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 221 and Andrew Yang's 1. Andrew Yang, even with this one electoral vote, has such an impact on this election, it would be crazy. Trump is going to win either way as of right now, but this, this is pretty insane. How much of an impact, in my opinion, he would have. We see Iowa and Ohio going safe, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania going likely. Minnesota flipping for Donald Trump. New Hampshire flipping for Donald Trump. Arizona and Nevada flipping for Donald Trump. Colorado to Biden. And then we have states like Alaska going lean for Trump. He does much worse here than he did. So, thank you all for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to me if you haven't already. I would deeply appreciate it. I am so close to, um, sorry, I was, um, I'm so close to 300 subscribers, so it would really mean everything to me if you subscribed. I just need five more. Please subscribe to my channel, but anyway, watch all my other videos, and I hope to see you all next time. Thanks again.